Okay. VMware Workstation 17 on Ubuntu Jellyfish, which is version 22. This was a little bit of a headache to figure it out, but I got it working. All right. So as you can see here, this is 17 Pro. Let's go ahead and close it. As you can see, we do have the let's go ahead and come out of the window. This is pulled out of the window. So as you can see, we have it running. So if we need to create another virtual machine, we can create a new virtual machine. We can go next. We can browse and go to documents, ISO, Rocky Linux. Select operating system, which is RHEL 9. So RHEL 9 is supported in version 17, but not version 16. So that's why we need the most recent version. Okay. Let's go ahead and just name it Rocky 9. Click on next. Dedicate the space. Click on next. Customize the hardware. We don't need a sound card for a server. Go ahead and close that out. Oh, let's change out the NAT to bridging to replicate the adapter. Finish. And it's going to go ahead and boot. There you go. So you can see that it does work. All right. So this is what you have to actually do. And I'm going to drop this into the comments so that you can see. You go ahead and update the machine. Then you install GCC, build essentials. And then after you've done these two steps, then you go ahead and download VMware Workstation. Once you download VMware Workstation from the site. So as soon as you go to uh, VMware Workstation, Do, do, do VMware workstation. As you can see, I was Googling like crazy trying to fix the problem. And Chat GPT is an updated baby. So you had to figure this out on your own. All right. So go to Workstation Pro. When you go to the website, and as soon as you click on this link, it's going to immediately start downloading. Now you can sit there playing around, farting around, and trying to, you know, W get. Don't waste time doing all that stupid stuff. Just go ahead and download it here. Once you download it, you're going to go directly into the command line. Let's just open up another command line. We'll just close this one out. So once you download, go to download your download folder. All right. So, oh, actually, it wasn't downloaded. All right. So let me open it back up real quick so you just can see because it's a quick download. So what you're going to do is actually you're going to change and chamod so that you can basically make it an executable. So this only takes, I'm on a decent bandwidth, I'm on a gig bandwidth. So it's taken roughly about a half a minute, right? So this is going to be done in a second. Then I'll just show you how to chamod and activate it, basically make it executable. Once you make the file executable, you can go ahead and install it. No problem. Do 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 ten nine eight seven all right yeah whatever all right so this is almost done so give it two more seconds booyaka is done all right let's go now let's go ahead and ls now you see that it's not executable now so go ahead and do a chamod u plus x vmware now, when you do it again, when it's green, that means it's executable. Another way that um, you'll see people saying, they'll say, go ahead and open up a folder and actually go to the downloads. You can right click on it, go to properties, go to permissions, and then you can just click the checkbox. You can do that too. If you want to play around with the GUI, you can do that fine. But once you do that, then you go ahead and remember, don't, don't forget sudo. It needs to be done with administrative permissions. You can tab it out, or you can just type in VMW star. That basically completes it out, and then you can install the um, installer. Type in your password, and then you'll actually start to install the you know, type your right password. <laughs> Okay, I think I typed it wrong again. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Anyway, so to extract the installer, then it'll start to install everything. Let me just cancel this because it's already installed. So that's all you have to do to install it. Once you get done installing the software, go ahead and run this command. I'll pop it into the video so that you can just go ahead and copy and paste it. The ones you'll see online is version 15. And they have all this other stuff to download. Don't don't do all that crap. So just just go ahead and copy and paste this and create the key, import the key. So this is going to allow you to actually create the security keys. Now, when you reboot, you're going to have to, you're going to go to a blue screen. When you go to a blue screen, you're going to go ahead and enter. So when you reboot the machine, you're going to go directly to a blue screen and obviously I can't show it on the video because the machine is going to be rebooted. When you reboot the machine, you go to the blue screen. When you go to the blue screen, enroll the MOK. So that's actually taking this key. It's basically a shim. So you're going to go ahead and enroll the MOK, which is the key. Once you enroll that key and then click on reboot. So it's going to say enroll key, enroll MOK, enroll MOK, click the key, reboot the machine. When the machine comes back up, then you're going to be able to actually, so the steps you're going to do is you're going to perform this task here, these tasks here. You're going to, you're going to create all of this. And this is how you verify. You have to, before you reboot the machine, you have to run sudo mock util import to import the key so that you can reboot the machine. So this is after. Um, even after when you run this, you might get a, you know, a message saying that it doesn't recognize it. It's not started, but as you see it, it's, it's starting fine. Let's go ahead and just run it real quick. So it says failed to open. Okay. So sudo failed to open. Don't worry about it. Ignore that. I'm not, I'm not even going to waste time trying to figure out why it's giving that error message. Anyway, so as you can see, it's running the virtual machines. You're good to go. And that's it. That's all you got to do. So once you finish that, install your operating systems, start doing your testing and validation for Kubernetes, whatever. And I haven't tested this with VirtualBox or, or anything else because I'm using primarily VMware Workstation. So hope this helps.